Do you remember the electricity at State Farm Stadium on Final Four Monday? Anyone? I do. It just reminded me of it. It brought me back so many great memories. Well, good morning and welcome. I'm Jay Perry, CEO of the Phoenix Final Four Local Organizing Committee, and thank you for joining us as we announce the economic impact results from the 2024 Men's Final Four. Hosting one of the biggest events in sports was a huge win for Arizona, our economy, our communities, our residents, and really our global basketball family. And I can tell you, it took a huge team effort to pull off this victory. In the Valley, we're fortunate to have strong public, private, tourism, and tribal support, operating as one unified team, which is essential to successfully hosting an event of this magnitude. We'd like to recognize a few special guests that are here today. Phoenix City Councilwoman, Keisha Hodge Washington, thanks for being here. PLOC Board Co-Chair, Ron Price, CEO of Visit Phoenix. Michael Bidwell, owner of the Arizona Cardinals and Insignia Event Services, and board member of the Arizona Major Events Host Committee. I think Danny Seiden's here, President and CEO of the Arizona Chamber. And so many more of you are just important partners to us. We also want to recognize the NCAA for their partnership and their leadership and to thank them for entrusting us with their crown jewel event of all time. We're so grateful for the strong support from six leading cities here in the Valley. The city of Phoenix, Mayor Kate Gallego, who could not be with us today, for their incredible collaboration on the downtown Phoenix campus that took over Men's Final Four weekend and for the great leadership of John Chan, Deputy City, City Manager, nothing happens without the godfather of major events. <laughs> and it also includes Sky Harbor Airport, who did a phenomenal job of safe and efficient travel of 360,000 passengers from around the US. The City of Glendale for their collaboration around the State Farm Stadium campus. The City of Scottsdale, Avondale, Tempe, Peoria. Thank you all for your partnership. Our Native American communities play a really important role in representing our past, but also our future success and culture. And we want to thank Trina Parvello from the Tohono Nation and also Cecily Peters of the Auction Community. Arizona State did a great job as the partner and host institution. And I want to recognize Mike Chismar, Senior Athletic Director. And again, with ASU, nothing happens without Chis. Am I right? Finally, we want to thank the Seidman Research Institute and recognize senior researcher Anthony Evans, who authored the study we're going to talk about today and oversaw all the work that went into producing it. The report shares some very noteworthy numbers about the economic power of the Men's Final Four, and we'll dive into that shortly. The Men's Final Four is so much more than a basketball tournament. It's a community celebration and literally has something for everyone. Free events for sports fans, for music lovers, for food lovers, and kids alike. Philanthropic efforts that leave our community stronger, like the complete renovation of East Lake Park and Community Center. And volunteer opportunities so everyone can be involved. All in all, it was an unforgettable April Arizona weekend with our signature sunshine that will not be forgotten for a long time. I hope you had a chance to experience some or all of it. And while the men's Final Four is certainly a lot of fun and games, and basketball at its highest level at the collegiate level, there's also a substantive business case. So let's get down to the compelling facts of why the Final Four, like other major events, is a force multiplier for our state. Successfully hosting the men's Final Four and future major events requires strong and steadfast leadership across multiple sectors, and it starts at the top. Governor Katie Hobbs is a consistent champion and has been incredibly supportive from day one, and it's my honor to introduce Governor Hobbs to announce the economic impact of the 2024 men's Final Four.
Well, good morning, everyone. I am excited to be here with all of you to talk about the success of the Final Four. It's one thing uh, with all the excitement leading into events like this to talk about how we know it's going to be great for the economy. It is quite another to actually show that in numbers. Uh, so obviously this was a team effort. You heard from Jay about all the entities that helped put together such a successful event. Uh, state agencies, local government, private partners, and we're so grateful to all of you. All around, this was another great showcase of Arizona's uniqueness, our food, our nightlife, our nature, and accessibility, to name a few. So thank you, Jay, and the entire Phoenix Local Organizing Committee. Uh, let's have a round of applause for everyone involved. You saw some of the highlights from the video about all the people who got to participate, whether it was at the games themselves or all the events surrounding uh, the event. Um, but we saw hundreds of thousands of Arizonans and visitors, visitors from all 50 states, uh, participating in the numerous events. The concerts at Hans Park, Fan Fest at the Convention Center, and lots of fun activities for everyone, even if they weren't able to be at the games. There really was something for everyone, and um, the economic impact was huge. Uh, I am so excited to share that according to the study done by the Seidman Research Institute at ASU, the 2024 Men's Final Four generated $429 million in economic impact for Arizona. That is over $100 million more than the last time we hosted in 2017. But that's not all. More than $21.2 million of direct sales tax, including $12 million to the state, $2.2 million for Maricopa County, and more than $7 million for our cities and towns. And while these numbers are certainly exciting, they represent so much more. Thriving small businesses, jobs for Arizonans, and lifelong memories that were created. The bottom line is that the 2024 Men's Final Four once again shows that when it comes to hosting major sporting events, no one does it better than Arizona. And I look forward to hosting all these vis visitors who had great memories that economic that is economic impact that will continue to pay off for Arizona down the road and doing it again when we host the women's final four in 2026 and then again in 2027 when we host the NBA all-star game. Thank you all so much. Governor Hobb, thank you so much for your enthusiastic support, your unwavering support, uh, and we are ready to start on the Women's Final Four, so let's go. Okay, so now it's my pleasure to introduce Tom Sadler. Tom uh, is our PLOC board co-chair and president and CEO of Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority. I'd like to give a special thank you to Tom for the incredible leadership and support that you poured into the Final Four and you put us in a position to be here today talking about the unbelievable success of it, and I just want to say thank you for all of you've done. Well, come up, now it's time, yeah. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you all for coming out today. Um, thank you, Jay. Thank you, Governor Hobbs, for all of your support. The process started when we were selected to host the 2024 Men's Final Four on July 16, 2018, 
2,777 days ago. There was a ton of collaboration among stakeholders. I'd like to thank all of those who came together, worked tirelessly on this massive undertaking for hosting the men's Final Four. I also want to recognize Jay Perry and her team and the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee Board of Directors for their extraordinary efforts in working with the NCAA to bring this event to fruition with an incredibly successful outcome. I also want to recognize my co-chair, Ron Price, and thank you for all of your contributions. I also want to thank Michael Bidwell um, and the Arizona Cardinals Football Club and Insignia Events for all of their uh, support throughout this event. For the student athletes who played in the 2024 Men's Final Four, the weekend had to have been a thrill of a lifetime. From my present perspective, and as Jay said, wearing two hats as the president and CEO and co-chair of the PLOC, I would use a different term to describe it, and that simply is, it was an honor. It was an honor for Arizona to host an iconic event, and we're so grateful to the NCAA for twice trusting us with their iconic championship. Now, just as a side note, the men's Final Four is different because it has two days of competition. And on Saturday, there are four fan bases in the building. I've been to hundreds of sporting events, but there is a unique electricity in the building on the first day when that semifinal game tips off with all those different colors in the stands. The three games drew a combined 149,000 fans to State Farm Stadium. The championship game between UConn and Purdue drew 74,423 fans. That is the third highest attendance in the game's history. Now, if you allow me a moment to uh, brag a bit about Sun Devil Stadium and all that it's accomplished over 17 years since it opened, please bear with me. State Farm Stadium has hosted three Super Bowls. Thanks again, Michael. <laughs> three college football national championship, two men's final fours, and uh, on a host of other mem memorable events along the way. I think some of you remember Taylor Swift and the Rolling Stones and Beyonce. State Farm Stadium is a proven economic driver, a major asset for Arizona's tourism industry. Numerous surveys have estimated the combined economic impact of the stadium events at more than $6 billion. That's with a B. A number that grew considerably after this men's Final Four, for sure. One last thing. One of ASTA's missions is to generate tourism by providing leadership to the bids that attract mega sporting events to State Farm Stadium. That was the one promise, one of the promises made to the uh, citizens of Maricopa County who approved Prop 302. And the 2024 Men's Final Four delivered on that promise. Thanks to everybody, and thanks for being here today. Tom, thank you so much for your leadership and your ASTA board as well. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Lisa Urias, CEO of the Arizona Office of Tourism and PLOC board member, um, to hear about some of our tourism benefits that have been amazing from the Final Four. Come on up, Lisa. Well, just jumping up. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Governor. Uh, great to see you all this morning. So major sporting events are incredible tourism drivers to Arizona. And the ASU study of the 2024 Men's Final Four makes that abundantly clear. Nearly 115,000 out-of-state visitors came to Arizona primarily because of the 2024 NCAA Men's Final Four. Over 68,000 of these visitors had tickets to at least the Saturday game, and they stayed an average of 3.9 nights. They spent an average of $482 per day, and they were accompanied by more than 5,600 friends and family. And that really says a lot. Uh, it's a great indicator of the power of Arizona as a tourism destination. No ticket, no problem. They came to experience Arizona anyway. And can we blame them? <laughs> uh, the 
Next game, 37,000 visitors came to the Valley for the national championship game on Monday. These visitors stayed in Phoenix for an average of two nights and spent an average of $566 per person. And another 3,300 out-of-state delegates came to attend the National Association of Basketball Coaches Convention, which is held annually with the Men's Final Four event. The games were televised nationwide, globally really, and we reached a combined total of 40.3 million viewers and 2,100 media impressions. So that's an incredible opportunity for Arizona to be showcased on the international stage. Uh, these numbers show that the Men's Final Four offers an incredible platform to share Arizona's story with the world. Uh, in Arizona, we're fortunate to have such a stunning destination, and the Men's Final Four works really well for our visitors because there's a day off in between the semifinals and the final event. So that gives our visitors the opportunity to explore the rest of the state. Uh, where can you go to any destination and be at a semifinal game and in the Chiricahua Mountains the next, or the Grand Canyon, or our beautiful White Mountains before going? to the finals. So we are very grateful to Jay and the organizing committee and everyone involved in the Men's Final Four event. And uh, our visitors are also very grateful to be here. So thank you for all you do. It benefits all our businesses, large and small. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right, and then last but not least, it's my pleasure to introduce Sandra Watson, President and CEO of the Arizona Commerce Authority, who has been an incredible leader in finding a really powerful intersection between economic development and these major events. And so we just appreciate all of your stewardship and welcome you to the stage. Thank you so much, Jay, and good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here. Um, I would like to start off by uh, congratulating the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee and everyone else who's been involved in this for your tireless efforts and, um, and your ability to really make Arizona shine. Um, the 2024 Men's Final Four was a success and what a huge success it was. As we heard from Governor Hobbs, um, the immediate economic impact of this year's Final Four was tremendous, generating $429 million for our state. But the long-term economic benefits of this event are still unfolding and will extend beyond the final buzzer. Major events like the Final Four offer an unparalleled platform for us to market Arizona as a premier business environment. With the Final Four as a backdrop, we were able to attract industry leaders from around the country to the state. Through the CEO Forum and our partnership with the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee, we executed a customized, highly targeted program, including panel discussions, pitches from state and local leaders, and one-on-one -on -one business meetings. This year's forum was attended by leaders from dozens of companies representing high-tech industries like the semiconductor, battery, bioscience and healthcare, aerospace and defense, and many others. Of those companies, we've added 15 projects and, we're, and, and counting to our pipeline. Several companies have already confirmed their commitment to Arizona, and our team is working with them to announce those projects. In fact, just this morning, we were proud to announce that the, uh, one of our participating companies, um, Comico, <laughs> a semiconductor supplier based in the Republic of Korea, will establish a new facility right here in Mesa. Representing, thank you. Yes, very exciting. Representing a $50 million investment and more than 200 skilled jobs, the facility will be Comico's largest site in the country. This is the type of high quality win supported by the CEO Forum, and we look forward to announcements in the coming months. In total, opportunities from the CEO Forum represent nearly 
3,200 uh, 3, potential new jobs and over $2.75 billion in capital investment. The CEO Forum and the incredible Arizona lifestyle on display can often be a deciding factor for these companies with the benefits that expand to our entire state. I would like to recognize Jay Perry, her team, and the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee who hosted the Final Four CEO Forum. I'd also especially like to thank our governor for leading that effort, and special thanks to Michael Bidwell. We would not be hosting these CEO forums without you. This was an idea that you had back in 2015, and we've been hosting a CEO forum every single year, and they've just been a tremendous success for our state, so thank you for your leadership. Um, actually, the feedback from this year's forum attendees was excellent, and uh, they were so thankful that they were able to see Arizona in action, and so we're so thankful for all the leaders and the partners who were involved in that forum. In closing, I want to again thank Jay for the amazing work that you continue to do, uh, Tom, Lisa, such a pleasure to be working with all of you, the continued leadership and dedication to our state. I'd also like to thank our governor, who's done an incredible job, really amazing, your steadfast commitment to hosting these types of events and really showcasing the best of Arizona. So thank you to everyone involved, and Jay, I'll hand that back over to you. Sandra, thank you so much, and what an, an exciting announcement. I mean, this really leads to growing our state, and we all get excited about that. I want to wrap up, and I want to thank each of our speakers and just tell you how much it means to have your support of you and the multitude of partners that are here, our civic communities, our volunteers, and the talented host committee staff whose all of our work has helped accelerate Arizona's economy, our philanthropic strength through the final four. And that cannot be overstated, the benefits of all that. We've thrown a few numbers at you this morning, but don't worry, there won't be a quiz for most of you. Um, the bottom line is the men's final four delivered another successful chapter in Arizona's longstanding history of being an incredible place to host these major events. And it really has set us up for a bright future. Before we close the program, I want to say that exactly what we planned here in Arizona is coming to fruition, and that is really embracing a championship culture. We've proven it with the men's Final Four, and we'll take it forward from here. As we look ahead, we have the women's Final Four very close on the horizon, and tip-off is only 591 days away. That sounds pretty close, right? <laughs> sounds close to us. Uh, but we are ready to jump in with all of you again and make it the best women's Final Four yet. And we get so, so excited about that. We're going to roll a short video. We're going to take a quick speaker photo. But again, I want to thank our guests for coming, our media members for coming today, and for being on our Arizona Final Four team. We really appreciate your support. Okay, quick picture, quick, quick video, then a quick picture. 